Good afternoon, everyone. This is the pre-launch news conference for OSIRIS-REx, scheduled to be launched on Thursday at 7.05 p.m. aboard a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. And here to discuss the upcoming mission, Dante Loretta, the principal investigator from the University of Arizona. One of the leading theories for the delivery of organic molecules to the surface of the Earth after that late heavy bombardment period is the exogenous delivery or the delivery from asteroids and comets. And we do have rare classes of meteorites that we call carbonaceous chondrites where we see uh, some of these organic molecules. And that's really what has made that hypothesis viable. But a lot of our analyses are uh, confused by the fact that meteorites, once they're on the surface of the Earth, are very quickly contaminated, organically especially, because microbes love these materials. They get in there, they colonize them. And the things we're looking for are the things that these bacteria are made out of, the amino acids that make up their proteins, particularly interested in the handedness. You know, some organic molecules have a right-hand version and a left-hand version, and life preferentially chooses one over the other. So we're really interested in what were those uh, original inventory of materials, the seeds of life that these carbon-rich asteroids and comets may have brought to the surface. We have over 700,000 known asteroids in the solar system right now. Yeah, and then in near Earth space, roughly about 10,000 near Earth objects that we know about. Custom made, custom made, yeah, custom made. Thank you. I love asteroids as much as the next guy. Who doesn't? <laughs> and uh, I also have a deep interest in making sure that we, by we I mean humankind, comes up with a way to deflect an asteroid, because it's, you've got to figure it's going to happen. Almost certainly the reason the ancient dinosaurs were killed. And so we will make discoveries on this mission that we have not anticipated. It's exciting, but I want in my lifetime to discover life on another world, if it's out there to discover. radar system can track uh, um, the near-Earth objects something like uh, 100,000 times more precisely than, than the optical folks can do. There are rocks all over the solar system. Look at the meteor crater landed, what, 50,000 years ago? That was a rock 30, maybe 40 meters in size. That's a crater that's a mile in diameter. That could have wiped out the whole Kansas City um, uh, metropolis area. This is serious stuff. I mean, we're lighthearted about it and, and stuff like that, because uh, right now we can't do anything about it, but we're on a mission to fix that. We want to give people the capability that if we see some, if or maybe even when we see something, we'll have the ability to, uh, um, to, affect, the, to affect the change and, and save the planet. So today I am here for the launch of the third mission in the New Frontiers program line, OSIRIS-REx, the Origin Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification Security Regolith Explorer. I know that sounds like a lot of words right there, but that's all of our mission objectives wrapped into an acronym, into our name. Meteorites are materials that have come through our atmosphere, have burned off, and then when they hit the ground, you know, they hit in water, there's a lot of atmosphere, there's all these contaminants that can cause a lot of changes to that geologic context. So there's none of that on Bennu. Bennu is this pristine rubble pile of things that have literally the fingerprints of four and a half billion years ago. You know, we're unraveling the mysteries of where, where did this universe even come from originally? OSIRIS-REx is addressing fundamental questions that we all ask ourselves at one time or another. First is, where did we come from? And the second is, are we alone? Because if we can unravel the pathway by which life originated on this planet, 
ultimately led to human civilization and technology, we can really start to intelligently address the question of, did this happen elsewhere? People find amino acids on objects like Bennett. And so there are reasons to think of it. Amino acids can survive in deep space for, pick a number, four and a half billion years, 4.6 billion years. Just think, maybe life is much more likely than we realize.